Welcome to Heat Check. This is the highest selling vintage denim on eBay over the last two weeks. Let's see what made the list. All right, so let's start the list with some honorable mentions. This one's really cool. We have two honorable mentions, but this one is the first one. Uh, this is a Levi's denim banner wall hanging tapestry advertising the Jeep and Levi's collab where you could have your Jeep trimmed entirely with Levi's and denim. Uh, looks like you have a Hulk Hogan mask there. I'm not sure why that's there, but look at this thing. That is super sick. Um, you can get your Jeep Cherokee or an S or a CJ5 uh, line with Levi's. There's a couple of vehicles like this. I believe the Orange Tab line actually had one as well, where they uh, a particular model of I don't know if it was a Jeep or whatever it was uh, trimmed with Levi's denim. If we could find, if I could find that vehicle, that would be uh, that would be the my vehicle for life. So this one's super cool. It did sell for a cool one thousand dollars. We have one more honorable mention, and that is another vintage Levi's advertising piece. This is the Saddleman statue, apparently given out in the 1940s. Uh, it stands about 30 inches, 29 inches tall. You can see there's Levi's in the big capital E uh, since 19 or since 1850. This guy has a little bit of damage. You can see his hand is missing, but they do. I believe they have the hand. Yeah, there's the hand um, and some other parts. There's the Levi's uh, uh, patch. Like It looks like it's a re uh, real patch. Um, this looks like the uh, Jackron patch, not a leather patch. So I'm curious whether or not this was just something they did in the 40s for advertising or if this is actually more like the 50s because of the uh, Jackron patch. I don't really know. But, but either way, it's super cool. Obviously, incredibly rare. Uh, this was for pickup only. Uh, they did not want to ship this because of its condition, which I don't blame them one bit. And it sold for $2,094.69 with 15 bids. Really cool piece here. Now on to the actual list at number 10. We have the 1940s Carhartt blanket lined uh, duck jacket. We do include duck canvas stuff on here because uh, they are sort of denim adjacent. Here we have the... Uh, Carhartt, let's take a look. There's the cool little patch. Um, we've had problems with this in the past, necessarily dating these really, really specifically, but that 40 sounds about about right. Uh, this one's interesting because it has a hood, uh, which I'm not sure if this is like. Uh, I'm actually not entirely sure. Uh, this is there's the Troy uh, blanket. We might might have to do some research to see if we can uh, use this tag to date it, but. Um, here it is on the back as well. Looks like somebody colored it in or sewed it over or something. All kinds of funky going on with that. Uh, but this has a hood. It doesn't look like the hood is probably original. It looks like it's an older hood. But that's, I mean, you can see the wear. It wears so differently than the rest of the jacket. It may have just been included at some point when somebody picked one up. Uh, either way, it's got a really cool like fade on this thing where it's dark and light. Uh, probably where it, the way it was folded, but super cool. Sold for one thousand dollars. Then at number nine, we had this 1960s, apparently one wash, uh, 501A type. Uh, that was uh, like a, let's see if it show, we can show the uh, patch here. Yeah, that little A right there above the 501. Uh, this was a thing that appeared, I guess, in the late 60s. It it seems like. Um, there was A, S, uh, you might even, I think it was an F maybe that you got like failed or, or, or something like that. Anyways, there was three uh, different letters. I can't remember the third letter, but an A and S. Um, these were like a rating as how high quality the denim was, um, or at least that's what it's supposed. Uh, but anyway, this one sold for uh, just above number nine at one thousand. Ooh, let's do it again. All right, then at number nine, we have this 1960s one wash, apparently, 501A type, uh, 29 by 30 red line, obviously. Uh, really deep color here, it looks like uh, to me. Um, we have a 501. This looks like it is like a late 60s 501, I believe. Uh, yeah, you, don't, you don't see any hidden rivets, no V-stitch. So this is probably 67, 71. I do believe it is big E still, yeah. Uh, there's the selvage. Uh, this was interesting because the patch here uh, has an A above the 501. This was a thing in the late 60s uh, where they gave uh, 
they did them like a rating, a quality rating. At least that's suspe suspected what that is. Uh, they have A, S, and uh, I can't believe remember the other one. It's either D or F. I can't remember. That was like defective or, or faulty or something like that. Um, but this one's pretty cool. This one is sold for a cool one thousand dollars, and one extra dollar gets it above number ten. Uh, this sold for one thousand and one dollars. All right, at number eight, we have our first Type 1, a 506XX. Uh, this one's really cool. It's pretty good condition, pretty clean. There's a little bit of uh, rough edges here and there. The pleats look mostly intact. You got the flap on the top over the, um, the pocket, letting us know this is more uh, like a later model. Uh, we have the buckle back, as uh, these Type 1s tended to have. Um, generally, it looks like it's in good condition, pretty clean. Um, obviously, uh, lost some of its color. Um, but what really affects the price on this one is its size. Here you can see it's only a size 34, which is really small uh, for the for uh, modern wearers. Uh, so that's why this one only sold for $1,007, when normally these would sell uh, quite a bit higher than that. All right, next up we take a sort of big leap in price. We have the 1960s. Here's an S type versus the A type we had earlier. There's that S you can see stamped above the 501. Uh, this is a better and more wearable size at 33, 32. Uh, still plenty of color. You can see the uh, selvage down there. Lots of color in this. This is actually a really like almost perfectly wearable size. Uh, this is probably the most common size, like a 33 to 32 inseam. Um, we have a big E letting us know this is a late 60s including, uh, and look, this is a, a bit older too than the previous one because you can see the V-stitch here. Uh, still no uh, hidden rivets, but we do have the V-stitch letting us know this is like 65 to 67-ish uh, time frame on this uh, pair right here. A beautiful pair of jeans, uh, definitely. This one sold for $14.49.99. Then up next we have the 551Z Big E Redline Selvage Denim Jeans. These are 34 by 34. That's a really long size uh, for jeans that have, let's see if that's actually what it measures. I'm not sure that's what it measures. Let's see. No, that's the whole jean. Give me just the inseam. There we go. Yeah, it measures a little bit shy of that. So we're about, you know, 31 and a half. So that's pretty good still. Uh, very good for a jean that's probably been washed a few times and shrunk down uh, with uh, with time. This is you have the offset belt loop. We have the uh, lot number here, 551 ZXX. Uh, looks like everything here's in really good condition. Still very clean. Uh, look at that, like the looks like the red sort of bleeds on that selvage uh, on the on the red line selvage. Uh, let's take a look at something. We have the V stitch there. We have I think it's a K. It's a good indicator of it being old. And we have a gripper zipper is my guess. Yep, we sure do. Um, a beautiful pair of jeans for sure. This one is uh, a great. A, the 551s are not hard, uh, easy to find, that's for sure. Uh, and that's why this one sold for $1,700. Then up next, we have a 501 classic. <laughs> uh, this has got the every garment guarantee. It looks like late uh, 50s, early 60s on this one. But uh, still great color uh, and shape on these. Uh, let's take a look at some. There's uh, there's some distressing uh, on the front and the pocket, which is not uncommon. You have a V stitch on this thing, hidden rivets as well. All of the things that we would expect to see on a pair like this. Uh, 36 waist by 31. Um, it looks like they include the measurements. The waist actually comes in at 34, inseam 20, uh, 28. Uh, Beautiful pair of jeans. This is coming out of, uh, it looks like it's being shipped internationally from Malaysia. Uh, but beautiful pair of jeans. This one sold for $1,800. Then the march of the Levi's jeans continues here at number four. Uh, this is typically how it goes. Levi's just dominates. But I will let you guys all know that number one is not Levi's, so stick around for that. Here we have the 501Z, actually, it's not the 505, it's sort of, been, it's sort of predated the 505. Uh, we have the selvage Big E right there. Uh, there it is on the back, it's more worn on the, let's see, it looks like it's more worn on the back than it is on the front, which is interesting. Um, otherwise, it looks like good condition, clearly been washed, we have the offset belt loops. 
clearly been washed a few times. There's the gripper zipper. Yeah, this is. these are all good indicators that these are not a 505 and rather they are a uh, 501Z. Um, a beautiful pair of jeans for sure. Again, we've seen a lot of uh, a lot of uh, zippered 501s or uh, those variants on the list today. Uh, for whatever reason, sometimes they come in waves. This one sold for $1,905 with 14 bids. At number three, we have another Type 1 here. This one uh, does significantly better. 506 double X. We have uh, pleats are a little bit messed up here, but no big deal. There's some wear on the uh, collar where it folds. Pretty typical on the, the sleeves where the, uh, the hems are. Like that's just all pretty typical stuff for stuff that this that's this old. Uh, we have the pocket flap on this one. Uh, this one though, uh, I need to double check. Uh, let me know in the comments below. Uh, but this buckle back. Is that? I don't think that's the original buckle back. Uh, let me know if that's in the comments. If you guys point that out, it doesn't look right to me. I know there was an earlier model, but I don't think it's this shape. And obviously, a safety pin is definitely not <laughs> standard. So I think this has maybe been replaced or repaired. Um, but if I'm missing something, let me know. I don't. I don't. I don't think that's correct. Uh, even though they they mention they highlight the fact that it features the iconic buckle back. Well, yeah, it has the straps, but. Not sure that it's actual, the actual buckle. So, um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not right. Anyways, this one did better because it's a better size. On this one, the size on this one was, let's take a look. Yeah, it was 19, so we're at like a 38 rather than a 34 that we saw previously. And that difference, uh, uh, tandem out to a $900 difference. This one sold for $1,925 with 38 bids. All right, at number two, we have the last Levi's item of the list. We have the Levi's 505 dead stock pair of jeans here. Interestingly enough, we haven't seen a ton of dead stock recently. Uh, this is the only one on this list, I believe. Uh, it has a little E, so we know we're looking at uh, on the other side of 71 on this one. Shrinkage controlled, single stitch, obviously. Uh, let's take a look. Uh, these are all different uh, elements we would associate with pair of 70s jeans there is a tag looks like these are from, these are from 74 um which is yeah right in line with all of the other elements here the scoville zipper is a little bit unique uh, we would have sort of expected maybe a a talon uh 42 uh, from this era but uh the date code on the tag is pretty clear uh, either way dead stock like this you're gonna get a premium for sure now this one sold for what they asked for it uh, at $2,499. Then at number one, it's not one of the big three denim brands, actually. This one's really fascinating. Um, I had to do a little bit of extra research to talk to some friends about this one. We have the 1940s, 50s Nunnally Denim Chore Coat. Uh, this one... Sat, sits atop of the list for a reason. We're going to talk about that here. Uh, here you can see the Nunnally's patch, engineer jacket. This is yeah, that's kind of what an engineer jacket uh, would be. Although you notice some differences, particularly in the pockets. Um, this also has a chin strap, which is uh, very desirable these days. Everyone wants the chin strap stuff. Um, but these pockets are what's really cool. They are actually patented pockets. Um, exactly what you know so great about them i don't know but they are packeted uh, uh, patented and very unique to nunnally uh looks like they have a zipper across which probably would have been early for like zippered pockets that's for sure all these photos are upside down those are that's a beautiful uh, uh button nunnally in uh, nunnally's engineer uh button uh somewhere you know or decent wear fading some distressing normal for this type of stuff here um, it's curious to me. I don't see any exposed selvage, which is uh, sort of a, an unusual feature. It's not, I mean, it's not super strange, but um, you normally would see on some garments like this, denim garments, that there would be some exposed selvage, but not in this case, which is interesting. But anyway, the, the pockets are what really makes this in the chin strap as well. Uh, this is really cool to see on number one, uh, dethroning Levi's I'm really happy about. 
Uh, we it sold for two thousand five hundred and fifty dollars with forty seven bids. Obviously, a lot of people after this thing for sure. Uh, does not come up all that often, as you might imagine. So congratulations, beautiful uh, engineered uh, denim jacket, and great sale.